Hello and welcome back. I'm Denny and this is my sweet oasis. If you haven't noticed already, this week our setup looks a bit different. That's because my husband had a, I don't know if it was a genius or a not genius idea yet. We'll let you decide. Um, he had the idea to film a reaction video. So today I am going to be reacting um, to another YouTube video. So today I'm going to be reacting to a cake decorating video from Gretchen's Vegan Bakery and this specific video is entitled How to Make a Birthday Cake Beginner's Tutorial. So we're just going to watch the video together and then I will give you my real time reactions. Uh, I will be giving my opinion of ways that maybe I might do things differently um, or things that maybe I may not do or things that I really like. These will just be my opinions. These will not be the right or wrong ways of doing things. So let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So before we start that, um, just a couple of things that I did notice. Um, that's not necessarily my style that I would decorate with either of the cakes with, that's just personal preference. Okay, so what do we need? Well, we need quite a lot of things to build a cake, right? First of all, you have to bake your cake, you have to make your icing, you have to make your filling, you have to think about the decorations that you're going to be using for this cake. So you want to kind of think out and design your birthday cake before you get started, obviously. Now, I'm going to pretend that this is the birthday cake for me, even though it's a little bit early. Um, so of course, my cake is going to be chocolate. I am going to fill my layers with just a little bit of ganache, but when I cut it, I also think through to the cutting of the cake, right? Because not only do we want a stunning outside of the cake, but when we cut it, we sort of want everybody to go, ooh, wow, looks cool, right? So I'm also going to be putting a layer of buttercream as well as the ganache for my filling. So it's going to be a ganache buttercream filling, chocolate cake, Swiss vanilla buttercream icing. And um, I'm going to just show you guys some cool techniques. So feel free to do it or don't do it. Make whatever kind of cake you want. It is your birthday or whoever's birthday you're making it for is typically uh, what kind of cake you want to make, right? So I'll just show you like this. I love how she's really encouraging people to do whatever their creativity is leading them to do because that's really what cake decorating is all about. So I love that she's really uh, capturing that horrible sketch that I do um, just to sort of design my cake so that I know really what I'm doing once I get started. Um, there's nothing worse than getting into building a cake and then just like having no vision and no real idea of how you want it to look. So I always do sketch out my cakes ahead of time so that I have everything prepared and ready to go before I start. So that that's a really good tip. Um, I don't always do that. Typically, I like to look at Pinterest and to get a feel for what I want to do based off of some other photos. Uh, I, I just tend to work a little bit better if I'm seeing something in front of me as opposed to drawing it out myself. And it's also because sometimes, you know, you might make a little bit of a mistake in one spot, so you need to cover up something. So to look at some photos and have a vision in your head, or if you just want to start with a blank canvas and go, that is also an option, especially if you're just making it for yourself. You can do whatever you want with it and nobody's going to care because it's for you. That way you guys can see just how quick and easy it is to slap together a birthday cake. I went to slap it together. <laughs> 
So the one thing that I want to do first, because I did make this Swiss buttercream yesterday, um, I want to get it back to a real nice smooth consistency with no air bubbles in it. So no matter if I made it just now or yesterday, um, I want to get it back on the machine and on low speed and just smooth it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then trim up my layers. Now, if you guys are part of my Best Baker Club, you will know a lot of these tips and tricks that I'm telling you right now. Like, for instance, getting that uh, buttercream on the mixer to smooth it out, right? So if you're not part of the Best Baker Club, why not? Sign up. It's free. You're going to learn a lot. Um, one of the most asked questions I get is how to trim down our cake layers so that they're all the most, um, so that they're both all even sizes for when we cut the cake, right? So, um, serrated knife <laughs> always. And basically, what you're just going to want to do is kind of estimate where you want your cake. I mean, this is a pretty tall cake. I don't really want my layers to be exactly this size. So I'm just going to trim off the top there. And it's a sawing motion as I'm turning the turn stand. Little, I'm not going through to the center. I'm just going maybe about two inches into the center as I'm turning. And I'm doing a little bit of a sawing motion. And once I get back to where I started, then I can go ahead and cut straight through to the center. And most often, I do have a pretty straight layered cake after I've toured it. So that is an option that you can do with the cake in order to even it off. I typically don't do that. I don't like that method because I'm not good at um, cutting straight in general with anything. <laughs> so I do not like that method, that method personally. And I think there's just a much easier method if you have a, actually, I don't even know what it's called. I have this little like wire that is on a handle. It almost looks like a table saw, the table saws, right? Okay. <laughs> it almost looks like a little, um, is it a table saw or a hand saw? Hand saw. Whatever. <laughs> it's one of the like, saws that you hold and go back and forth manually. Um, that's what it looks like, but it has a wire instead of a saw blade on it. Um, and so what you do is you set that flat on your on your counter or your table, whatever you're working on, and then you just kind of smoothly move that wire back and forth in a sawing motion. And you just want to make sure you hold the top of your cake, and then you can cut all the way through that. And it has adjustments, so you can cut whatever um, depth that you'd like to. I find that so much easier to use, and I get a lot straighter results. You just have to be careful when it comes off the other side of the cake and like, Put your hand on that side of the cake to give it some structure so the instability so that when you come out of the cake with the wire it doesn't tear that outer edge but you know if you don't have that on hand and you really need to level out a cake using a serrated knife is the best bet that you have and you can see that this one baked really kind of lopsided. That had to do probably with my pan was a little bit dented. Maybe it was in a weird spot in the oven. So this one's going to take a little bit so more So to prevent work. that from happening, there are a few different options that there are. Um, first of all, if you really try to center your cakes in the oven as much as possible, that will help prevent it. Also, if you really slap your cakes down on the table uh, before you put them in the oven, then that will help release some of the air bubbles and even out your cake in the the pan so that it also bakes a little more evenly. There's also little heat, um, oh I forget what they're called, but they're like a metal toothpick on this. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but there's these little metal sticks that you can put inside of your cake to help the cake bake more evenly. There's even fabric wraps that have some like aluminum lining on them that you soak in water and then wrap around on your cake pan before you put it in the oven. And that helps the cake to bake more evenly as well. Uh, I don't know though, because she is a vegan bakery, so she might have a little bit more issues getting her cakes to bake evenly just because of the ingredients that are in them. And because it's smaller, I don't want to cut off so much because we do want to keep the layers all even. So for this one, I'm just going to really trim off that top. And don't throw away your scraps. I save everything. Stick them in a Ziploc bag, pop them in the freezer. You never know when you want to have like a garnish for the sides of your cake or just make cake pops. 
So that five minutes on low speed on the mixer um, with the paddle attachment really smoothed this out perfectly. So there's not going to be a lot of air bubbles in my buttercream. And um, it's just super silky to work with now. Not to mention it is the Swiss buttercream, which is awesome. I have worked with Swiss buttercream a couple of times. It's not my go-to buttercream that I use. Um, all of the times that I have used the Swiss buttercream, I have used it the same day that I have made it. But I did find that you are supposed to put it on the mixer and re-aerate it and mix it before you, uh, before you use it again, after it sits for a day or two. Now I am going to be using all of the tips and pastry bags that I personally sell. Um, I really don't use too much more than these few tips that are included in my cake kit. So if you guys want to check them out, definitely click here so that you can see exactly what it is that I'm selling. Um, I just think it's really the highest quality pastry bags especially. And the few tips that I use, I just use them over and again for pretty much every project. So I know that she's selling her project or her, her project. I know that she is trying to sell her kits. Um, I would recommend, especially if you're going to decorate a lot of cakes or several things in general, because I also use the same tips that I use on my cakes to decorate all of my cookies um, and, and cupcakes, anything along those lines. And it's nice to have multiples of the tips that you use often. I have several tips that are repeats or are just really, really similar because whenever I am using multiple colors, it's really, really nice to not have to clean out that tip before switching over to another color. Because as she said, you do kind of get in a place where you use a lot of the same tips when you're decorating. Maybe not all of the time, but there are those nice go-to tips that you fall back on that just have the basic designs that are the base of the majority of cakes. So it is really, really nice to have multiples just because it makes your life so much easier. And if you have a dishwasher, it's not a big problem because you can just pop them in the dishwasher. Um, other note is, especially if you're just baking a cake at home and you're not doing it professionally or like on a larger scale, then there's no reason to have the reusable bags. I would highly recommend just buying the plastic piping bags. So you can find those in any cake decorating aisle. They are also on Amazon. I would really, really, really recommend getting the Wilton bags just because they're nice and sturdy. I have tried to use some other brands that come with, I got some Russian tips and they came in that kit and I blow those bags out like nobody's business. Like I will be squeezing the frosting out and it'll just shoot out the side all over what I'm decorating because they are a little bit thinner. If you don't decorate often, they will do the job, especially if you're not decorating uh, to sell anything, because if you mess it up, then it's still edible. But in all actuality, they are a little bit trickier. If you don't have built up hand strength though, and you're not used to squeezing a little bit harder, then it might not be an issue for you if you do buy those cheaper bags. But I really wouldn't recommend buying the reusable bags if you're not gonna be using them very often. Chocolate cake, it's my favorite recipe on my whole entire blog, and of course it's chocolate. There's no need for simple syrup here. Um, you could use it if you like to use simple syrup, but it's really not necessary here for this recipe. I so we're just going to do a small buttercream dam because I don't want any of my filling to be sticking out the sides. Always do that. And one other thing, if you're wondering why my cake looks kind of weird and like frosty, I do work with frozen cakes. And if you were part of my Best Baker Club, you would know that too. All the whys of why I do certain things, you guys will definitely become Best Bakers if you join my club. Never work with a frozen cake, guys. Uh, I don't know what exactly she's working with because she does use vegan recipes, um, but I can tell you from my experience and from research on why I was having issues with different things, never use a frozen cake. You want to have a cake that is either slightly chilled or at room temperature before you begin working with it because it will make your frosting sweat and your frosting will then separate off of your cake and it will fall off or it will like bulge out the side and like you'll have this just bubble hanging off the side of your cake, but I would never um, use a frozen cake. I wouldn't risk it. It does make it nicer because it doesn't crumble as easily, but 
I mean, if it's going to fall apart when you're done, that's a no-go. Uh, but as I said, I don't know like what her frosting is specifically, and I don't know um, with her cake, with it being vegan, I, how those interactions work. But if you're just using a basic cake and basic buttercream, for sure, do not, do not begin decorating it frozen. This is just a simple ganache recipe that has set to um, room temperature. Well, actually, I had it in the refrigerator overnight, so it's a bit cold still, but it is definitely spreadable. I love ganache as a filling in cakes. For sure, I would definitely want to get that ganache to at least room temperature before I started putting on the cake because it would just make it a little bit easier to work with. Um, but it sounds like she might have just not had it out quite early enough to have it to room temperature yet. And it was obviously spreading on the cake, but just a pro tip for when you are trying to, to decorate a cake, the easier you make life on yourself starting out, the better your cake is going to turn out and the less frustrated you're going to be. Um, so it just makes your life easier to be working with any frostings, ganaches, anything that you're going to be topping that cake with to have it at room temperature when you start because it is going to spread so much more easily. And it could definitely tear your cake if you have something that's way too thick. And I'm going hot pinky filling today my birthday cake. I get what I want. So she didn't have to put the rim of, of buttercream around the outside of this layer. She didn't want to because she is filling it with buttercream. Unless she just has the filler um, thinned down more than she does the buttercream that she rimmed it with. The, the goal with rimming your layered cakes is if you're using any form of filler that is thinner and is not as stable as your buttercream. The issue that you run into if it's not stable and, and if it doesn't have the structure that your buttercream does is it will actually start to squish out the cake and you will again get those bulges and bubbles and it can leak into the frosting that you have on the outer layer of your cake. It can just start running down the cake. It can use, just depends on what you have in there, um, but it can get very, very messy. So she didn't have to do that on the, the layer that she's putting buttercream in. Um, but it, it might just be because she wanted it to be symmetrical with the other layer, or maybe she just had it thinner, so. Now, it would be at this point, depending on your filling, like if you had like a chocolate mousse or a lemon curd or something that was super slippery, you may want to at this point stick it into the refrigerator just for about 10 minutes so that these buttercream dams will firm up before you go ahead and start your icing because if you have too soft and slippery and you start icing this cake, forget about it. It's going to be a disaster. Um, but my cake that was would be pretty cold. My fillings were pretty sturdy, so I don't feel like I have to do that here. I am going to do a light crumb coating, though. That'll make life so much easier. I always do crumb coats. Now the thing about doing a crumb coating is that you don't want to add the excess buttercream with the crumbs in it back into your nice final icing. So always keep it separate in a separate bowl, which I don't have. So yes, definitely never mix your crumbs back into your regular frosting bowl because then you're going to have crumbs on the outside of your cake as well, which defeats the entire purpose of a crumb coat. Um, also, to make her life a little bit easier, if she don't want to have the long frosting knife, then I love my bench scraper. Um, I think it just makes life so much easier. I think that it makes the whole process quicker, and I love that it makes my cake look a little bit straighter than what it might necessarily be. Because sometimes, I mean, we're all human. We just don't get the cake lined up perfectly straight. It's a layer cake. You're adding layers on top of the other. You just don't get the layers lined up perfectly straight. And sometimes it just kind of leans one way or the other, or one of them juts out a little more than the other. And we try to prevent it, but sometimes it just happens. And the bench scraper corrects some of that because it makes the frosting completely even all the way around if you use it correctly. Um, I know a lot of people prefer to use the frosting knife that she is using. 
I do use some of those, but my go-to is my bench scraper. I love it. Now, I don't know if you noticed that, but I did build my cake on a cardboard, which I always do. It's just better to transport it. It is so much easier to handle it if you do have to get it in and out of the refrigerator in between stages. Um, it just really is the best to always build your cakes on cardboard. For sure. And because it's a crumb coat, it doesn't matter that this cake is showing through. It's really just sort of like, um, I don't know, like the primer when you're painting, right? It's just like an undercoat. And then the final icing goes over top. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like at this point. It's called a crumb coat because it's supposed to have crumbs in it. It really helps so that to me is a pretty straight looking cake. The top is perfectly smooth. I know that there's this thing on the internet right now going around where people are like icing it with a cardboard on top, then they're flipping it over and they're doing like this really weird thing. Um, I haven't graduated to that yet, so if you guys are looking to do that style, you're going to have to go to somebody else's channel because I haven't quite done that yet. I am so completely old school and I love to teach you guys just really um, the simplest ways to do things and have them come out really great. So um, to me, this is a perfectly smooth sided cake. I am going to pop it into the refrigerator for just about five or ten minutes before I do my final icing. So you can do that um, by popping it into the refrigerator after the crumb coat. Honestly, the best thing to do though, and I, I will swear by it until the day I die, is to let that sit overnight. So to make your cake the day before, you want to actually frost it. Let it sit overnight, let it harden as much as possible. Just let it sit on the counter at room temperature. That will really seal your cake up. It'll make it nice and smooth on the edges. It will make it less likely to bubble from any weight of the frosting or for the frosting to fall off. And it'll minimize any risk for bulging. But several people do use the refrigerator method. All right, now for our final icing, and then we can get to decorating. As you see, I have a habit of um, really plopping a lot on top, and then I sort of work that. And as you see, there's this excess that's wanting to fall off the sides. That then becomes my sides. It's just a technique that I sort of picked up over the years. It really just makes for faster icing because when you're in a bakery setting and you have to crank out like 100 cakes a day, um, you really need to figure out how to be a little bit more efficient. And so this is the technique that works for me. If you guys want to give it a try, you probably will love it. She is not wrong. Everybody has their own techniques for frosting a cake. Uh, I kind of mix a few different ones and just depends on the day and what I'm feeling like. Uh, but the main method that I use, I actually use a giant <laughs> piping tip and it's actually like a basket weave tip, but it's really, really big. Um, and then I put it with the like the serrated side up against the cake and then I put the frosting on the sides with that. That really like gets the frosting up against the cake and it just gets it on there more cleanly and I don't make as much of a mess and it's really quick at the same time. So that would be my suggestion. There are a couple different methods that I use. Like sometimes I just take a knife and put it on if I have a really small cake or something. I don't know. However, I, however I'm feeling that day. But as she said, you do have to become efficient if you're making multiple cakes in a day. And so you just have to go with whatever works best for you and whatever you feel the most comfortable doing and what works quickly for you. It just matters what the end result is. But see, it would get rid of all of this stuff that she's doing right here if she just put the piping and hit put it on the piping in the piping bag and all right so now there. what do we do with this unsmooth sides we've got a lot of air bubbles in here well that's where the trusty blowtorch comes in never seen this. you guys know me and my blowtorch now if you don't have a blowtorch it's fine well it's kind of not fine go buy a blowtorch everyone needs one 
If you don't have a blowtorch, you can just do the same method, uh, the same technique actually, by dipping your spatula in some really hot water. Obviously, you're going to want to wipe it dry before you put it on the cake. But the whole premise behind the blowtorch or the hot water is just to really warm up your spatula, which then in turn warms up this buttercream icing and you get totally smooth sides. Watch this magic. And that was just one pass through. So you can see how quickly that works. You just don't want to get your spatula too hot because then you're going to just melt your buttercream. So there's sort of like a fine line that you just have to play around with. There you have it. I love that technique. I have never seen it before. Um, I have use the hot water technique in the past and it works but it's a lot slower because your spatula does not get as hot as if you would use a blowtorch. Um, I do have a uh, I do have a blowtorch though so I will be using that probably. Um, anyways so another technique that you can use is if you have a bench scraper and if you have your frosting thin enough then you don't really need to worry about sending it down with any type of heat because it'll just smooth out without doing that. Um, but I don't, like like I said, I don't work with Swiss buttercream a lot. But when I did work with it, I didn't have any issues with it thinning down for me. But that's probably a bit more quicker when she is using Swiss buttercream a lot and she's trying to pump out a lot of cakes. Every time you go to smooth the top, you want to make sure you get that excess, excess buttercream off your spatula. Sure. One pass. That's exactly how Wipe I it clean. Yeah. You guys want Another technique that you can use after you've left your cake sit for a little bit, and this is with regular buttercream, not with the Swiss butter, not with the Swiss meringue buttercream, because like I said, don't use it very often. But with regular buttercream, if you let it sit and just get a little bit of a crust on the outer layer, and you use the pinky test to tell if it's hard enough, you just press the side with your pinky very lightly, and if you pull away and it doesn't stick to your pinky, then you know it's ready. You can just take a piece of parchment paper or a paper towel and you just put it up against the side and use the heat of your hand to very gently just massage that place on the cake and you would get rid of that crease that she has on the side of her cake where she pulled the spatula away. I know, there's a fuss. Anyways, I have, that is a lifesaver for me. I don't like to use it for the whole cake. I like to get my cake pretty smooth and then just use it for those creases where I'm pulling the spatula and bench scraper away from the cake longer videos here's your longer video <laughs> thumbs up if you've made it to this point already <laughs> thumbs up for me oh my too. God, you talk too much <laughs> Yeah, that would clear off those creases that are on the top of her cake too if you use the parchment paper technique or paper top. She's not lying. Once, once you do it, there's no going back. <laughs> I noticed when she put the um, polka dots on the side that there were, and as my mom has always called it my entire life whenever I have decorated with her, and it's one of her biggest pet peeves, so I always noticed it, when you make dots with your piping tips, if you do not do it correctly, then you end up with a nipple. So if you don't want to end up with a nipple when you make your dots, then be sure to hold your piping bag in place squeeze out the frosting to make the dot, then, be, blah, then stop squeezing, 
And then instead of pulling directly up, you will want to just slide the piping bag to the side. Don't push down, just keep it at the same place and gently slide it off to the side. That will fold over that little like point that pops up and then looks like a nipple. Also, I love that she said that she didn't like the design when it was done, but that there was no going back once it's on the cake. She is not wrong, but you can definitely kind of work with it more. If you don't like it, you can add more things to it. You can add sprinkles. You can, there's a few things you can do, but sometimes there's just no going back. That's why I like Pinterest. If you look, you can also tell that her stripes down the side of the cake are not exactly straight. Um, it's kind of hard to get them straight on the side of the cake, but there are a few things that you can do to try to mitigate that a little bit. One of them is that you can actually make marks with a little frosting scraper. You can put it on the side of the cake and then you can take another frosting scraper and you can mark the sides of that and then, or just one side of that. That gives you a straight line that you can then follow. So you can start the, the top and you can just follow that line all the way down to the bottom. That would help you get it a little bit straighter. Honestly, I'm a big fan of marking the cake before you start because it helps. I, I'm bad at getting straight lines. That's all it comes down to. So I love marking it so that I get things straight. You can also use a fish line or dental floss and flavor. So are the nipples. <laughs> So there you go guys, there's like a festive, it's sort of Her like polka dots are also not straight or even, so you can actually take measuring tape and you can measure it out and you can make a little mark with a toothpick um, or whatever to make sure that you get those evenly spaced and a little bit more straight. Um, but I mean, honestly, it's hard to get stuff on the side of the cake, like right, because you're working vertically, not horizontally. The sides of cakes, and I think it's really cool and it's so simple to do. You only really need three tips and three colors to pull it off, but you could really do it any colors that you want, any designs that you want. And so let's just finish the top with some flowers that I have pre-made. They're in the freezer. Um, if you guys haven't watched my How to Make Buttercream Roses tutorial, you definitely want to check that out because it really is very helpful. A lot of people have said how wonderful it has really helped them to finally get it on how to make buttercream roses. So then I'm just going to do a little happy birthday to me and we're all done. Those are really pretty roses, but there are ways to make them a little bit more detailed and look a little bit more delicate. That's my favorite leaf tip. Just a little pro tip, um, or not pro tip maybe, um, of how to get your lettering on a cake a little bit more centered than what you might if you just kind of write it out normally like she is. And it looks great the way she's doing it, um, but I know for me, I like to do the first letter and the last letter of the word, and then I work from there. So that way I know where my beginning and my ending points are, and then I am not like lopsided, it's not too far one way, and it helps me keep the, the sizing of my letters a little bit more even across the word. She's doing great at laying the frosting on the cake though and not like shoving it into the cake, which a lot of people do. There's something to be said about making your own birthday cake because you always know you're gonna get what you want. So that's it guys. I really do hope that this was a helpful tutorial. A little bit of a different design here today that I actually can't take credit for because I follow White Flower Cake Shop on Instagram and they have just such inspiring cakes. And so I sort of was inspired to do this design from them if you wanna check them out on Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, why not? So there we have it. Happy birthday to me. 
Thanks for watching Gretchen's Bakery. As always, get all the best recipes at Gretchen'sBakery.com, and I'll see you soon. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to go check out... That was so cute. Um, I love that she um, referenced another bakery and admitted that she got her design idea from there. Do that all the time. Guilty as charged. It's one of the best ways to just get some fresh creative ideas um, is to look at other people's ideas. And I love that she gave them credit for that. So um, no, honestly, that was great. Some great tips. There were a few things that I would do differently, but I mean, everybody has their own style and has their own tips and tricks that they like to fall back on because it all goes back to what she said. It's all about efficiency at the end of the day. So whatever you're most comfortable with and whatever works the quickest for you is always the best option. And like she said, if you're not following me on Instagram, then you probably should. And Facebook. Thank you for joining us on this new adventure. Um, if you liked our reactionary video, then please let us know. If you want to see more of these in the future, then for sure let us know. And definitely, if you have any ideas of videos that we should do reactionary videos for, then be sure to share the links in the comments for us. As always, remember to be sweet and like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, all that jazz. And please find us on Facebook and Instagram.